Hello, John and Maria. Well, the stuff I learned this week was all about car repair. Actually, it was all about my car. And that earlier this week I overheated on the side of the, well, actually I overheated heated in the middle of the road. That was part of why it was so scary. Scared because my car seemed to be exploding while I was in it. I'm glad I survived. So you know the Avalon that we bought when it was new back when in 1997 and I called dibs on when we were 12 and you popped the bumper off of it when we were in high school and before that not only put that weird purple stripe on the back of one of the chairs and also in high school I ran it into your car like eight thousand times because you would always park behind me and I would try to get around you'd go to school and I would always hit your car and you probably don't know just how many times I hit your car it was a lot what to do in case your car overheats in the middle of the night I was driving home from the summit and I stopped at a red light and I noticed the vehicle next to me had seemed to be issuing smoke from somewhere and I'm sitting here looking at it going wow guy you need to take better care of your vehicle it's just <laughs> billowing smoke and then I stopped and I kind of looked at the smoke and I realized it seemed to be coming from the front corner of my vehicle suddenly I noticed it was issuing forth from my own vehicle and that my heat gauge was all the way over on the H and I went snap I didn't say it's that I said something that starts with a shaw and ends with a t and it has a couple of is in the middle and I said a lot Anyway, so I'm driving. I called Dad. Thankfully, he picked up right away. And here's what you should do. If your car starts billowing smoke, pull over immediately. Shocking. Step two, wait for your vehicle to entirely cool down before attempting any repairs. Otherwise, you will burn the crap out of your hands. Luckily, Dad told me this on the phone, so I didn't try and uh, fix it because I do do that sometimes and it almost never turns out well although a lot of the times I can MacGyver crap and I think it helps that I sing the MacGyver theme song while I do it. I called my roommate she came and picked me up um, I came back the next day during lunch with the aid of a co-worker who is a knight in shining armor and has not agreed for me to say his name on the internet so I won't but he's awesome two thumbs up Oh, gallon of water, good to have. I went to work the next day with the gallon of water, got the coworker who shall remain nameless to take me to my vehicle and I filled up, there's an overflow reservoir and the actual radiator. The actual radiator is kind of hard to tell if you don't know what it looks like, um, but it's got this cool cap that's got two little nubbies sticking out of it and it's connected to this thing that'll go across the front of your engine. And it goes all the way around and it's big it's the same color as everything else in your engine but the overflow reservoir is kind of like a white jug like plastic so it looks a little bit like a gallon of milk and it has lines on the side that say fill and well actually it says full i think not fill but um i filled it to the full line with water because i didn't have any coolant just laying around and if the radiator cap had come off and it looked like it was dry in there i would have filled that up with water as well but I couldn't tell there's some coolant trapped around the cap and it's not advised to mix the coolant and the water if you can avoid it so I just made do with what was in the reservoir when I drove it to the shop. In my 25 years of life I have learned that if a guy is with you when you drop off your vehicle at a car place they will try a lot less hard to overcharge you regarding crap your car doesn't need. Anyway, that's what happened to me last time. I went and got, I took my own tires with me to the car place which I'm not going to say who it was, but it rhymes with um, Ludgear. <laughs> and they called me and I was like, and they were like, hey, I know you said just replace your wheels, but I just want to let you know that your wheel bearings seem to be a little bit iffy. So they tried to do a $400 repair on my car, which should have only cost 60 bucks if you're counting 20 bucks, wait, Hold on, I can't do math. 80 bucks at the most if they were 20 bucks a wheel, which Walmart will do 10 bucks a wheel, especially if you bring your own freaking wheels. Anyway, I didn't catch them before they started the labor, so they ended up charging me anyway for the amount of work it took for them to deconstruct and then put my car back together, even though they didn't actually replace anything. And I was so mad, and I'm too broke for that crap. I got a mail 
member of our species to take me to the car place and they were really nice. Later I realized that they may have thought I had cancer because I was wearing this cool looking hat that I think makes me look 20s and but I also had this brand new haircut that I've got this week which then was a little bit shorter and like you couldn't see any of my hair under the hat and it looked a little bit like mom's hair did and that whole I've got cancer kind of thing and I didn't have any makeup on and everybody that day who didn't know me was really solicitous. See? It's a little cancer hat-ish, right? I do like it. It makes me look all 1920s. But I'm thinking now I look like I had cancer. So that may be why they were so nice. They were really gracious. They didn't try and sell anything else to me other than what was wrong with my car, which it turns out was a cracked radiator. Yay! Less than $500 later, I got my vehicle back the same day, and they actually called and asked to come if I needed a ride to come get me uh, when I, uh, at the end of the day there, because I didn't have a ride, obviously, since they had my vehicle. And I mean, that really kind of touched me, my soul. And the place that I went to does not rhyme with lid gear. In fact, it rhymes with, um, impress. Rube. Not to be confused with impressed royal. <laughs> That's horrible. So long story short, I survived it. I learned things about my car and I shared them with you. Um, I wish I could have been up there with you this weekend. It's probably for the best that I'm not. Dr. Copeland ended up calling an emergency additional rehearsal for tomorrow at 5 and it's mandatory so if I, I would have had to change plans anyway and I'd much rather spend some time with you guys um, for a longer period of time than two days. So, um, I love you both. I have no good sign off. I'm going to figure out a sign out one of these days. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.